Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the ball. Welcome to the RTJ podcast. Rory O'Neill is my name, sitting in for Jackie today. It's a bank holiday. It's a really nice day. And delighted to be joined by Ray McCluskey for his podcast debut and Barry Kelly, former intercounty referee. And it was a good weekend across both codes, but we're obviously going to start with football. And it's brilliant to have you on, Ryan. And Fermana really have come out of the traps, much to a lot of people's um like many people had them picked potentially as being one of the teams to be relegated and you know like they have three points on the board including a very comprehensive win on saturday over kill there so hugely encouraging yeah um thanks for the the opportunity as well and the introduction um yeah we're absolutely buzzing um down here it's it's been a Great start, um, you know, from the, the first two games, the, the Mies game, there the probably was a disappointment, would you believe, that we, we didn't take our opportunities. We, we were ahead twice in the game by three three points. So, you know, and I know we finished that game with a draw away in Navin, which usually is a good result. We're actually very disappointed not to get the, the, the full points on the board that day as well, which obviously led into the Kildare performance. And, you know, the boys wanted to kind of right the wrongs from the previous week capitalise on, on a lot of scoring opportunities that have been created in both games. And yeah, it, um, you know, it, it was thoroughly deserved, you know, from start to finish, finish that the lads took control and my own club mate, um, young, young Bogan Nets, ha, had an outstanding debut and, and, you know, has proven, you know, another real find in, in an, an exciting team. Yeah, let's, let's be honest as well. A um, couple of retirees and, and big, I suppose, yeah, big names as well have, have left the squad and uh, you know it, it just looks like at the moment the, these lads are, are starting to really kind of bind together and flourish as well I, um, I suppose it's great to have Barry on again I think there was a hugely encouraging win over Kildare as Ryan mentioned Barry they weren't really expected to um, to get anything when they travelled down to Navin and when you look at the teams at the other end of the table and the potential of dropping into the Talchin Cup, and particularly from a Kildare perspective, and given the way their season went last year, these are worrying times for some big names, Cork, Kildare and Meath. Absolutely, Rory. Like, I mean, a lot of talk lately about, you know, I think Kevin Donovan in Cork has emphasised that the best thing for Cork will be success on the pitch will will generate um, kind of success off the pitch and in terms of maybe monetary value and so on, but like, uh, Cork's championship uh, campaign sees them almost certainly playing Kerry in the semi-final. So Cork, Cork need to qualify with Sam Maguire via the league. Mm. And uh, like, you know, for, for a Cork a team like Cork not to be in the Sam Maguire um, is going to be a huge thing. The Talchon Cup wasn't created for the likes of Cork footballers, I, I'm sure in mind, like, you know what I mean? Like, so uh, it's a big, big thing, and I, I, I'm surprised in a way that uh, that Cork, like Fermanagh, obviously have to set their stall out. That for them, the league is one of the, it's the nearly the main avenue in in an unbelievably competitive Ulster championship. The main avenue to qualify for the Sam Maguire is through the league, and they've really set their stall out. I know that Ryan would know the, the background in terms of maybe heavy training and really knowing that got these two matches up first, got two Leinster teams, and target those two matches, and they've done so. And, you know, one more win for Fermanagh is going to leave them, you know, almost certainly in the top six in, 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 in the division. And that would mean qualification for the championship, um, for the Sam Maguire. Whereas, like, three very high, high densely populated counties like Cork, Kildare and Mead. Now, Mead have the, the safety net. They're in, they're in the championship because of Talchon Cup last year. But Kildare and uh, Cork... It, it's you know not, I won't say panic stations yet, but one more one more defeat and they are really staring down the barrel. You had one of the longest um, intercounty careers, Ryan, and you obviously played football at all the different levels and all the different divisions, and and you'd have very good experience of football at this time of the year. 
how important is getting that start and getting that momentum into your campaign? It's massive, you know, the, the first couple of games, you, you know, are so decisive in terms of this break now as well. So, you, you know, it, it, it's kind of a case of do you want to be looking up or, or down, you know, in terms of your position as well. Um, and, and I know, listen, any, any of the years that we were fortunate to have any type of success, um, it, it would have all depended on those kind of first two games. You nearly forget actually about, you know, your, your championship kind of status and get into the summer as well. Um, and I know, listen, I'd be close enough still to, to some of the lads within the squad. You know, it, it's not a case of of, of the Fermanagh lads, you know, I suppose underestimating where, where they're at as well at the moment. You know, you know they've pinpointed these two games, you, you know, as, as Barry had said as well, you know. And, and yeah, they knew they could get two results from these games. Now, listen, there are harder tests, you know, ahead. You know, your Donegal's, your Cavan's, your Armaz's, you know, Ulster Arby's, some massive games ahead in the league. But I know these lads would have pinpointed these two games and, and there were two brilliant games to start off with. So, you know, it's it's a massive, massive opportunity. And, you know, for, for even ourselves, you know, Johnny Cassidy's been out injured, probably one of the best defenders in Ulster, in my opinion, as well. He's to come back. Darren McGurn hasn't played um, this season as well. And I know he's not far away as well. So you're, not, you're looking at a key defender and a marquee forward as well to be added to that squad as well. So, so listen, there's a real kind of... I hunger and desire there at the moment and I suppose you, you know we've seen brilliant crowds all weekend at all the games I suppose my my cry here on on uh, this podcast would be for the fans to, to just get behind this side as well because you know they they are a young side we have the makeup of of that Hogan Cup team you know there's a lot of that Hogan Cup side that that, that won um for for St Michael's a number of years ago those lads are now starting to come through they're all 23 24 there's a brilliant age profile there as well. So, you know, yeah, it's 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 exciting times, yeah. And, um, you know, these guys are playing with, yeah, maybe the, maybe there is no real kind of, I suppose, expectation, you know, fr from, I suppose, the fans and supporters. So maybe that has shown. But, you know, when you take out a few big characters out of the, the change rooms, you know, the likes of Sean Quigley, the Joneses, a couple of lads, experienced lads as well, who have been brilliant servants, you know, for the county as well. Um, it's it's nearly like these lads have had to stand up as well. So, you know, you know, the, the the weekend didn't really surprise me. It didn't shock me in any kind of shape or form. And uh, yeah, although there are bigger tests ahead, it's it's certainly exciting times as well for for Man of Football. And you know, you know, we've talked about those sides in in trouble as well and on the slip. And you know, I've, I have family in Cork, so I always have a have a close eye in Cork as well. And mm. I always keep my eyes on on their results as well. And it just seems like they're trying to get so much right from a commercial side of things. And, you know, for me, even as a player, you know, I, I dread playing in, in Parky Quays, you know, with about 2,000, 3,000 there. You know, you probably yeah. want to get into more compact grounds where you can make a bit of a an atmosphere and, and make it a real fort, fortress. And that's what we've done in Brewster Park for years. And, and, you know, I'm sure if you ask the players and the management, they'd be the same. They'd, they'd want that fortress and to win their home games and to see where it goes from there. Yeah, I was actually, I took the trip over to um, to RD yesterday and it was, look, I suppose from my point of view as a supporter, first and foremost, they actually play quite well in some patches. It was extraordinary, actually, in some ways, how much of a groundhog day it was in that established themselves quite well in the first half, got a real good foothold in the game. More or less the same as what happened last year. And <clears throat> last year, Daniel O'Mahony was sent off and they conceded a penalty. And the, uh, while having been five points up, yesterday, three points up, going reasonably well, playing with a strong wee breeze. And next thing, within the space of 90 seconds, blow the open them up, scored two goals, bang, bang, and their heads kind of dropped. Now they managed to get back into it. But didn't really score for the last 10, 15 minutes. Lacked that little bit of cutting edge still up front. And they have a bit of work to do. I think the break in some ways came at a good time. In another yeah. way, it came at maybe the worst possible time. As you mentioned, Ryan, it is important to try and get a little a win because it does, when you are signing off for the two weeks, yeah. it definitely does help. But um, moving on to somebody, to a team that is obviously in great shape. Did you watch Derry Tyrone yesterday? I'm sure you did, Barry. Yeah, absolutely. And and again, it's just one thing there that Ryan mentioned that's very interesting is that he spoke about that Michael Dennis Gillen backboning, you know, young lads backboning their Pramana team. But the dominant the dominant school in, in college football in the last four or five years 
has been in in near CBS and they're again qualified at the weekend for another Leinster Conference final, uh, and they seem to have almost a monopoly in the competition uh, at this stage, a bit like Pat's Navin had maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago, um, and yet it's just not coming through at mm-hmm. senior level. And and you know Kildare's underage. I, I'm speaking as a Westmead man. We'd be we'd be envious of Kildare in terms of uh, at minor and uh, under twenty level. Kildare have been. You know the standard bearers, all Ireland under twenty champions, all Ireland twenty finalists. They're they're minors with the best record in Leinster football in the last ten years, six or seven Leinster finals, uh, better record in Dublin at underage level in 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 Leinster in the last ten years, and yet you know they're still not. I am anywhere near getting there, and it is kind of worrying too for for Leinster. It's all been this talk that Dublin have obviously monopolised Leinster in the last sixteen, seventeen years, and yet. We're no closer to seeing that coming to an end because your Kildares and your Meads are the two counties you'd expect to put the biggest challenge to Dublin. Uh, in fairness allowed, they have really, you know, up their game and you were there yesterday, Rory, but it's kind of worrying times for, for those counties. Just getting back then, um, question, original question, Rory, about uh, Derry Tyrone. I think, look, obviously, Ryan would know, Mickey Hart, very shrewd operator, you know, he probably ignores the outside noise surrounding his appointment in Derry and so on. It seems to bother other people more than it bothers Mickey. But I say he's also conscious too that, you know, I need to get these people behind me. Uh, Tyrone Derry's obviously a fractious kind of relationship uh, is well known. And uh, two huge wins for, for Derry in the opening two rounds. I mean, a way to Kerry uh, coming away with a win and then beating their nearest rivals. Um Again, with a big, big crowd present as well. Like so, um, two big wins for Derry, and they're really setting a stall out. You know, they have the Glen players back obviously already, and uh, four points in that division with those two matches is, is huge. And to get a huge buy-in from the Derry crowd, not to the needed really, but certainly uh, Ryan kind of mentioned you have a break now, but training now this time of the year for these lads can, can be a slog in a way, and you're going to training now with a pep in your step four points or from Anna's case three points uh, it, it's, it's, it's a big big thing the likes of Dublin with no points in Division 1 we know that Dublin can cope with that they have a lot of players come back yet but for counties trying to get to the very top rung of the ladder uh, it is it's great greatly greatly I suppose um, positive we get four points and you know the feel good factor Derry a few, few few young players again who came on scene I think, I think young Murphy yesterday was outstanding I think he got three points um, so a big, 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 big start for Mickey Hart, yes. I was a little bit disappointed, Ryan, in Tyrone. I thought they were going to, I thought they'd bring a bit more fight to the table. Now, having said that, you'd have to give huge credit to Derry. Their ability to control a game, very impressive. Yeah, and it's it's one of the things, you, you know, I've, I've noted down, and, and it probably goes back to, listen, you know, when Rory Gallagher and, and Kieran Mina were involved, you, you know, they've, they've got them to, to a level where, the, the players nearly coach each other out there. You, you can see that they have so much expectation and demand from each other that once they steal any type of, of yeah, innings in a game and, and get ahead, then they're, they're just hard to claw back. Um, however, I, I've been a bit disappointed with them. You know, they've done very well in two games, but they've only really played about two halves of football. You know, anytime I've seen them um, in those, those couple of games as well, and I've watched them in the Mechanic Cup as well. Um, it, it just like it looks like listen they're, they're going through the motions nearly at times. It looks like they're building. If you look at the game, you know obviously at the weekend, you know take glasses goal really out of it. You know the, the, the did he mean points. it? Did he mean it? Did he mean it? I don't know. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's playing yeah. at that level at the minute. You know he's on cloud nine. Just things seem to happen when you're when you're on the you know on the flow and and you know I suppose he laughed it off. I think at the time and said he that he did. did but you know, you know who's the who's the no? We we'll give it to him and credit to him. You know, after the, the phenomenal number of weeks he he's had as well. You know, and and listen, he's been brilliant since his return from from Australia. And um, you know, I suppose, and, and you asked me then about Tyrone, and, and for me, you know, you know, if you look at Tyrone and, and the, the spread of players, I suppose that they were missing at the weekend. We have Kilpatrick, McShane, um, Myler, McGeary. I think that's six, five, six all stars, possibly Hart as well. Um, that you know that we're missing, they're probably going to be slightly happier, you, you know, after it in terms of were they that far away? Um, they probably went in at half time thinking, you know, against that that breeze that you know we're, we're not far off actually, you know, you know, this game. And if we start well in the second half, 
um, yeah, then, then maybe we can get something out of it. Um, it just didn't kick on. Whether they, they believed, you know, that, that that wind was a massive factor and maybe they, they I suppose, yeah, they probably didn't believe in themselves that they could actually go on and, and maybe win the game with the squad that they had and maybe lacking, you know, a lot of those key men as well. But for me, I think they're just lacking identity at the moment. You know, if, even I look back to maybe two, three, mm-hmm. was it three years ago when they won the All-Ireland and yeah. they, they kind of were this really aggressive counter-attacking side and you look back to even the, the years that they won it under the likes of Canavans and... You know, those brilliant battles against against Terry's, you know, and, and all the, the, the top games they played at, at that stage, you know, you've just seen this really aggressive combative side. And for me, they're, they're kind of in between at the moment. Um, even with, with Niall Morgan, you, you know, it looked at the weekend that he was a bit indecisive. He didn't know whether to join and play, you know, whereas the week before he, he was up and down the pitch and he was getting more involved. So for me, I think they're, they're probably just finding... Yeah, a balance at the moment. They're obviously bringing in a lot of players at the moment, so you you know their their turnover of players as well at the moment is is probably yeah key as well to to what they're trying to do. But um, yeah, they, they I don't know what it is they're they're kind of lacking at the moment. But um, I, I know, listen, they'll be disappointed, and you know for for it to be such a usually a passionate derby game, there wasn't really much happening. You know, there was maybe a couple of handbags. I was just waiting for more, and, and I think you alluded to, to that as well. Mm. They've got a couple of t- they've tough kind of fixtures. That the likes of Dublin, Mayo, Galway coming now as well. Barry, like Tyrone, that two points they picked up the first day against Roscommon could prove invaluable. And it looks like it's going to be one of those divisions this year, particularly Division One, where lots of teams will take points off each other, and you, you might still go down with six. Yeah, and, and in many ways it's kind of on the opposite. Was it last year or the previous year where the, the Connacht teams in Division One kind of you know, led the way? And yeah, uh, last year. now this year it does seem like you know maybe Porrick Joyce is is enjoying this maybe because everyone seems to be on their case at the moment that they haven't started off too well. And as you said, point just it could be valuable in the end, but there's no doubt that you know both Gog and Roscommon will be thinking we want to have more than one point out of four. You know, with the, with, the, with the games that are still to come, you still have to play the likes of, you know, Kerry and 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 Dublin and so on. Like, so you would want to have more more than that on the board. Like, so yeah, it it does seem like I would think that Derry are a great spot at the moment. Other than that, Division One, I suppose, teams would like are that overly pushed and and winning Division One. You don't have that the jeopardy of the of the Talchin Cup is not there for those teams. Like, so um. You know, it's a little bit different. That's why I think I think Division Two is nearly, you know, it's a bit like, you know, sometimes a bit like you go across the water, and sometimes the, the English Championship is a more interesting. Very true. Yeah, it's a good because, analogy. Yeah. Yeah, because you know it really is where it's all happening, and you know, I, I think like for, even looking ahead there, look at the fixtures, like twenty fifth of uh, February, Fermanagh at home to Cork. Like Cork do have a tough opening in that they have uh, three away games in the first four. And, you know, away games for Cork, obviously, are not the same as anyone else. And that long journeys and, you know, Bally Buffet last week, no one was surprised at that, really, because you know, the guard are obviously flying, a lot of training done. Jim McGinnis factor, obviously. I don't think anyone's expecting Cork to, to get anything with that game. Uh, but even Louds from Cork, you know, yourself, Rory, it's a, it's a fair it's spin. spin. It's a good spin, yeah. Oh, and, like, and then do they do overnights? And then, you know, players doing overnights. You know, I, I know even talking some Westmead horrors and some used to do overnights, but, you know, it's you're down there at five or six o'clock in the evening, get a bite to eat, gonna kill some time. It's a long morning. Then the following morning, you know, like up to two o'clock, like hanging around the hotel, and you know, it's um, it's, it's not. Simple. I was happy enough to get away from the kids and get a bit of peace. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say the older players love it, Brian. Live in the vida. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> these days, Brian, no one, inter- no one footballer has kids, as far as I can make out. <laughs> <laughs> if you did a did a profile of them or a pen picture in the program, it's no, they're all still the same. They all still watch the Shawshank Redemption, and they all still that's the number one film. And <laughs> have, 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 have a partner or girlfriend that says already off the off the off the skate off the thing. Right. Uh, yeah, I mean, Fermanagh and uh, Cork on the twenty fifth in in up in uh, Enniskillen is going to be you know a cracker because Fermanagh are going to know that we win this game. And we go on to at least five points. Yeah. Okay. I think they've done they've done goal next again, kind of local derby for them. Yeah. Like, but mm-hmm. if they have five points and with Cork going home and Fernando have five points that day, you're nearly out of Cork's reach. 
Yeah, yeah, and, and you and you have and you have them on the head to head. Then should you finish level in any way? So, yeah. so it, it is. It's I, I now. I, Don Cleary saw there where he said that they played well, but the result was disappointing. And there's no doubt in my mind that even the authorities they won't want to see Cork in Tolchin Cup because I would think that I saw down in Parky Creek last year and Cork played was common in the championship and it was a fine game of football, a really good, you know, entertaining game. Cork deserved to win, I thought, on the day, just about. But, like, that's the level Cork are at. Like, they're a top 10, top 11 team, no doubt about it. Uh, no team want to play them in the championship. But if they're in the Tolchin Cup, it really takes the good out of the Tolchin Cup too. I couldn't see any team living with Cork in the Tolchin Cup. If yeah. Cork buy into it, yeah. I've no doubt they'd kind of have to because it will guarantee championship status the following year. So, you know, I'd say the GA even are thinking, God, we'd like to see Cork in the, in the Sam Maguire. But um, with the resources they have and... You know, underage activity in Cork has really upped its ante in the last four or five or six years. Um, like they they will be, they'll come to from Anna, I'd say locked and loaded now that day. Yeah, they'll be certainly one to look forward to. But quick, briefly looking back, I think many people's game of the weekend in a football sense, well, certainly one that a lot of people were looking forward to. It was a brilliant atmosphere, looked fantastic on TV. It was on RT2 on Saturday night, it was Dublin Mayo. Ryan, um, Dublin again lose by a single point, even though I don't know if they deserve to lose the game. Would that be fair? Yeah, I think I think it was a case where the best best team actually won. You know, on the evening they controlled the game. I think up until the goal, I think it was around fifty one minutes. Yeah, when that Stephen Co- Cohen goal, um, brilliant again, anticipation, brilliant finish from himself. I'm, I'm sure he was lauding it after the game. But uh, f- for me, Dublin kind of looked back to themselves. You know, in terms of you watch them. Yeah, against Monaghan, it nearly looked like a bit of a hangover from the from the previous season. Uh, there, were, there were sixes and sevens in terms of defensively very open, um, just you know not really getting into any defensive shape or structure to to control. Yeah, their their defending, and um, which allowed Monaghan then to, to capitalise. But they, they look back on themselves against Monaghan in terms of yeah, Monaghan found it very difficult. Or sorry, Mayo, sorry, found it very difficult to penetrate them and. Yeah, they, they seem to get up the pitch and score reasonably easy, you know, from watching the game. Um, in terms of their, their attacking play, even, you, you know, they, they were sucking Mayo to one side and it was blatantly obvious, you know, they were trying to create mismatches on the opposite side of the pitch and the ball was was quickly, yeah, distributed, you, you know, f- from from either side, yeah, it, it was quickly moved across and they were creating those gaps and, and listen, they, they had a number of chances, they probably could have been in a goal as well a number of times, but... I think they were they were happy, you know, and and happy to be ahead for large period, periods of the game. I suppose, yeah, uh, the the young keeper, um, who who is still yeah learning the game at this this stage of handling, handling um, I just thought he was caught out a couple of times in in key moments and just trying to rush things. And you can understand that. Listen, he's a, he's a young lad and he's done brilliant as well for the squad, but. Um, I think he's still finding his feet and he needs to make those mistakes as well and unfortunately we have to compare him to the best keeper that's been there for the last what, 10, 15, yeah. 20 years so you know it's, mm. it's a hard one in that sense but um, no I, th- I think overall you know Dublin will be will be happy with their performance um, and then Mayo on the other hand you know they, they never back down you know you know, as much as you didn't think that they were going to do anything in the game and you always thought Dublin were going to run away from the game they just found a way to, to kind of just keep Hanging in, and you know, you know, it was a credit to them in, in that sense that, um, yeah, they they just kept plugging away, and then that that goal was obviously decisive. But you know, you had O'Donoghue the whole game, who who just constantly was was terrorising that Dublin defence, you know, and and they, and they gave it everything. For me, it, it's it's a case of as well. I was looking at O'Shea, and as much as he's listen, he's a brilliant player. He's a fantastic servant to to the jersey as well. Just don't know what they were trying to do with him. You, you know, they were trying to kick the ball in. It was easy pickings for Dublin at times because they had so many players back and they were well organised and um, that they were trying to hit him on every occasion. It just wasn't happening. And if he did get the ball, he was just being surrounded by Dublin players. You know, there was no real emphasis on the on the Mayo half forward line trying to kind of, you know, flood in, you, you know, to, to try and win that break ball. You know, if, if yeah, and then nine times out of ten it was being broken down, you know, on top of O'Shea. So it, it it was kind of crazy at times what, what they were trying to 
to a team. And, and when they got the goal, obviously he wasn't even in there, you know, when the high yeah. ball eventually was kicked. Yeah, it was a bit of a poxy enough there. old goal, like, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and I think it was a cross, uh, or not a cross come shot, sorry. It was nearly a, a shot that, that just ended up on top of them. But um, listen, you, you know, do, Mayo obviously will, will be ecstatic. I don't think Dublin will be, you know, over aggrieved by the whole process as well. You know, they'll be disappointed with how the game finished. But um, again, listen, the crowds were outstanding and you have to hand it to, to Mayo as well. And Dublin, you know, it's, it's brilliant to see. Yeah, it's great for Gaelic football. And as, yeah. Ryan, as, Ryan, as Ryan said there, Barry, I don't think Dublin will be overly and unduly worried. No, at the same not, 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 not like when you're coming off the back of Whittier, Ireland, and then, you know, there's a bit of a you know, a bit of a honeymoon period maybe afterwards and it's a bit slower to get back on, you know, like everyone else and bit, probably a bit more behind. We still have John Kiley and Limerick as well and we'll refer to them later on. Um, two one-point defeats to two very hungry teams, Mayo and Monaghan. But it, it, Ryan's mentioned a couple of times, like, you know, the GA sometimes were very quick to knock ourselves and yet when you get, you know, progress in the sense of, you know, floodlights are have just really added so much to, like, I'm sure, I'm sure the business in Castle Bar on, on Saturday evening. <laughs> Couldn't measure in terms of what it brings to the local economy. And from and far out from Castle Bar too, the dub's staying over, people going out, have going to the match, going for a bite to eat, maybe socialising afterwards, going for a few drinks, whatever. But as well as that, there was 16, I think 15 and a half thousand at the game. But as far as I know, Rory, it, it, that doesn't include like under 16. They're not, yeah. they're not buying tickets. So you could yeah. probably add Maybe health and safety might query this, but you could probably add four or five thousand to that in terms of the crowd on the pitch at the end of the game was like, I mean, I think on television, I was watching it. Kieran, uh, Kieran O'Veal was looking on in, in bemusement at a league game, and the crowd came out of the pitch like Mayo had just ended the, the famine. Like it was, it was <laughs> pretty close to 20,000, but even looking at Armagh, Armagh against Loud at the weekend, uh, it was 11,000 at it, and not again, not including the 16. You could probably add. A third more than that, at least. I think Celtic um, Park was sold out. Yeah, it was eleven. I think it was eleven thousand plus in, in Celtic Park as well. It was sold out though. It's really incredible. And and Armagh against Mead. Now look, Armagh. Armagh played um, West Mead in the championship a couple of years ago, and it was embarrassing from West Mead's point of view. But in terms of Armagh, must have brought down four four fifths of the crowd from Armagh. They're incredible followers, Armagh, as as Ryan would know. But there was there was nine thousand Armagh and Mead. Uh, and again, add in the, the three or four thousand kids and under sixteen and so on, thirteen or fourteen thousand people at a league game. Uh, okay, the weather has been pretty decent. There hasn't been, you know, but still, it's a league game early in February. And again, I'm sure someone could do the, the tallies on it. You're probably looking at one hundred and fifty thousand, one hundred and sixty thousand people at matches uh, nationwide over the weekend gone by, which is absolutely mind-boggling. Really, you think about. It. Mm. It, is, it, it is it's fantastic and i'm and i'm sure there was a there was a big crowd in clonus and a big crowd to see the return of one the one and only david clifford right and he comes on and he scores a goal yeah i think it was about 32 minutes i think he entered the the arena and um by all accounts yeah the, the game had been very tight up to that and then it is the david clifford effect isn't it when, when he comes on you know and, and if you, you watch them again against um, Derry the week before, you know, they, they can be got at, you know, this Kerry team, you, know, you can score and you can penetrate against them. And Monaghan again proved that at the weekend. But he's just, listen, I, I, I can't even write down the words I can describe him actually at this stage, you know, and I, I can't even, yeah, vocalise them. He, he's just on another level and um, unmarkable, you know, you, you put two, three on him. And I suppose where, where Kerry have developed the game over the last number of seasons, you know, if you put two or three on him to, to kind of double, triple mark him, then gaps appear in other players as well. And then the likes of, you know, his brother or the O'Shea um, young man steps up and, and uh, it's just, you know, they have created so many threats all over the, the, the pitch. But um, he's absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal sorry. Um, I'll split that out. Uh, yeah, and, and, you know, the, the crowds he, he brings to games even, you know, as soon as he turns up. You know, you know, there's players running around for mana here and young kids running around for mana and they're all wearing, you know, his club top at the moment and it's it's signed. So, you, you know, everyone's mad to get a hold of, you know, his club jersey and he's just on another level, real superstardom. And it's brilliant to see as well, you know, and, and how he has raised the profile, obviously, of the of the game as well. So it's it's testament to himself. I'm going to touch on, on referees quickly, sorry, here as well. You know, you know the new initiatives that, that have come in. I'm sure it has been a couple of weekends where there's been a lot of bookings 
um, seemingly, and a, and a lot of those black cards as well. But I think it's brilliant. Uh, uh, they must have stamped down. Maybe Barry can elaborate on this as well. On maybe it must be talking back to the referee and trying to kind of follow that that rugby background. But you know, it it would stop bold pups like myself certainly on the pitch, maybe challenging referees at times as well. So you know, I, I think the refereeing has been absolutely brilliant over the weekend as well. It was actually in both calls. Last weekend. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's been absolutely yeah, outstanding. So, you know. Yeah, that's 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 it's, it's good to hear, and and you know, like I suppose, look, this this happens maybe generally anyway. Like, there's probably more in hurling again. We we'll get later on, but probably more clamp down on, on foul hand passes in the first couple of rounds of the league, and then it tends to, you know, a bit of a lull happens then, and then we're heading for the championship. But you know, setting your stall out early on in terms of, you know, telling players right, this is the way things are going to be this year, and you know. Uh, I was in Mullingar yesterday for Clare were a bit unlucky and possibly had a square ball goal, but David Murnan from Cork had a very, very good game. I thought he was excellent. Square goal, square ball goal at the end. Haven't seen a video footage of it since. I've seen a few clips on, on Twitter and it looks like maybe a harsh call on Clare, but yeah, good to see. Just an unusual one, really, Rory, for you on the just think of this now. And again, if you're in the match in in, uh, in Monaghan at the weekend, like I see her and Messi. Uh, they played, uh, is it Inter Miami, whatever they call it? They played some match out in was it Korea or Japan. Korea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I presume it's South Korea, not North Korea. But anyway, um, they played a match apparently, and I think the government had given money that this match would be funded and so on. But Messi, he was injured apparently. He spent the whole day on the on the, had spent the whole match on the bench, and there was nearly a mini riot. Uh, they started booing David Beckham, and I'm just thinking that's the David Clifford effect. Like yeah. obviously Messi is well. Yeah. Well looked after for his troubles, but they did have a triple effect. We all read about like Foss's games in in Kerry and Foss's games going beyond that, and you know it really is like he is. It's it's hard to think of a of a GA player in the last twenty years with that kind of effect of you know. I'm sure that if he hadn't come on against Monaghan at the weekend, there'd be an awful lot of people, even Monaghan people, probably. It increases our chance of winning if he doesn't come on. We actually well, want to see him. We want him. to see him. We want to see him. Yeah. The kids want to see him playing. And I don't know how the Kerry lads themselves cope with this in terms of the Kerry lads go in, you know, the Tig Morleys and all these lads go into <laughs> the dressing room, shower and get changed and are probably having their post-match meal. And 45 minutes later, in ambles David Clifford having signed nearly, you know, a book worth of autographs. And, you know, they're waiting around for him and trying to manage that as well. Like, it's just... Like he really is, and he comes across. I mean, I've never met the guy, but he comes across in terms of he is a really a unique uh, gem in in sport and his talent and the way he carries himself. And he really is now. He's he's a phenomenal, um, phenomenal person. Appears to be and obviously phenomenal footballer, and he deserves every applaud he can get for the way he carries himself and commitment and. You know, put put in very long seasons with his club and with the regional teams and Kerry and divisional teams, and you know, I'm sure he gets, you know, lots of close attention. Put it that way, and yet you never see him reacting, and he just gets his football that's talking. He really is a, an absolute credit to him. Yeah, and we're looking forward to seeing him now plenty more times over the next couple of weeks as well, because obviously, if he's back in the fold now. We... It's he's back playing for Kerry and he's had his break, and we're obviously for Gaelic football take a break next weekend and. And on we go from there. Great to have Ryan on board. Thank you very much, Ryan, for your podcasting debut. And we'll hope to have you back again, no doubt. Uh, we're going to take a very, very short break. When we come back, Shane McGrath is going to join us for a little bit of hurling. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar. Oh, holy Moses. Welcome back. Delighted to be joined by Shane McGrath, first review hurling podcast of the year. And again, it was great to have the small ball back over the weekend, Shane. You were in Nolan Park, Kilkenny Wexford, big crowd. What was uh what was the sense of it down there? Yeah, there was a great atmosphere there, Rory. Uh, the official attendance came in around eight thousand two hundred, but I'd say with you know, kiddies and stuff like that, I'd say there was you know, more close to the nine thousand mark. Um thought the pitch was in immaculate condition, always as it is. always is in Nolan always Park. Is. Now it, it 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 dug up a little near the end, but what do you expect? A, a early doors in February, so that that definitely added to the game as well. Um, great atmosphere, and you know, I suppose we all know like that Wexford. If there's one team that just don't fear playing, no matter what how things are going, good, bad, or different, seems to be Kilkenny, and they seem to have their number the last few years. And 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 an indicator of that, I suppose, is like say 
we all know Keith Rossler, the hurler, the way he played and the passion he had for his county. And he stood right out beside him um, until the national anthem. And he could see what he was saying back to them. And, you know, they obviously have so much respect for him. And I suppose the performance they gave there yesterday, you know, albeit Kilkenny, you know, most of their team were, were probably training earlier that morning. I just went through quickly, like, uh, we'll say, you know, Mikey Butler, Hugh Lawler, Wally Walsh, Paddy Deegan, Tom Field and John Donnelly, TJ Reid from the All-Ireland team. They didn't feature at all yesterday. But look, that's that's the way it was all around uh, all the game. But like Wexford came and what I was really, really impressed with Rory was we have associated Wexford, I suppose, not not that they're playing negatively, right? But I suppose were they going out to kind of not to lose games, maybe than to go at teams, right? Mm. And that and, and it worked for them to, to a certain point. But I, what I was really impressed yesterday was Lee Chain won the throw in or won the throw in. He won the toss. He decided to play against the wind. The, and the wind down in Nolan Park, I, said, I, I haven't seen a wind like it in Nolan Park. You'd associate it more with a wind in Salt Hill kind of thing coming in off the, off the sea. But they decided to go against the wind. And like, you know, I was there and everyone around said, Look, they're surely going to play one or two extra back now against the wind. And they didn't. And they went man and man. And the way they set up, what it allowed them was Richie Reid would have probably sat in the pocket for Kilkenny with that breeze. And we all know the ability he has to spray the ball around. He's such a good striker of the ball. But because he didn't have that space, they, they weren't able to get the same quality ball in. And with the wind, Kilkenny only scored three points from play. And I think that's a testament to more how Wexford set up and how they went at it. And I hope they keep at it for the rest of the year because, you know, they did a lot of new guys on there yesterday, but they 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 went at it. They went man on man. Um, they scored two eleven with the wind. Kilkenny scored nine points with the wind. You know, and I I just I, I was saying yesterday I just I thought it was funny Rory like the top scorer um was only on the field for about twelve minutes. Uh, it was Billy Drennan two three. Now it was all from place balls. He touched the ball seven times, scored two three, and you and he had to do the running after the match. Uh, with the lads who didn't get much game time, it was just I thought it's kind of funny like, but um, lads he's some man for a dead ball. But uh, to go back to Rory, all in all. And around the grounds, Rory, I think you will agree too. And Barry, I, I thought there was, I thought it was a really good opening round. And if, if there is an indicator, are we going to get something more out of the league? I think we did see it. I think we did see it with this threat of relegation there um, yesterday. It does feel like, like especially with the intercounty hurlers, I, there, I got a sense, and it was the same with Dublin Tip. It's like stallions that have been bolted up for months and they're basically just let out and there was a sort of a an exuberance in the hurling no the quality I mean people can argue the toss on that but it just felt like it was back and I know look people might say that I could be quite critical of club uh, club hurling and club football at times in comparison insofar as I don't necessarily think it's going to ever replace the intercounty but I think when you see intercounty hurling and football played, Barry, and you 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 just realise the quality and the standard, there's nothing can touch it. And I think it's it was it was great to see hurling back, and it's it I I just think it's a very important to make that distinction that like intercounty hurling is top class. Absolutely, and I, I'd imagine as well that the likes of I'd say Liam Liam Calblow and Tipperary, like I mean, it's been. It, I think I read somewhere it's maybe 220, 230 days since Tip last played. And obviously the last game they played was, you know, didn't go to, you know, didn't go to plan at all um, against Waterford in the championship. And uh, I'm sure they're absolutely chomping the bit to, to get out like. And, you know, just saw the highlights and, you know, Parnell Park, as Shane knows, not the easiest place to go to. But, you know, they, they seem to, you know, they seem to, I won't say win at their ease, but they seem to be now pretty comfortable all the way through. And, Never really challenged. Maybe a bit disappointed for me. I don't know who. Maybe much, much more from from Dublin. Donald Burke is still out. A big, big loss. Uh, Owner Donald again playing him. Maybe not full back is you know. I was trying to get you know trying to and make improvements elsewhere. And uh, I, I actually think that I think the two teams like you look at Tipperary like and and the group they're in. Um, you know that win is pretty much almost guarantees now that Liam can go and attack the league really. In the sense that they're going to they're going to finish in the top three in that in that group. That's you know that's nailed on, and that means they're in the top division next year, which is a big big thing. Even for point of view of county boards, you know you want to be in that top group because you know you get a percentage of the with the gate receipts, and you want to be in the top group playing the, the top teams in in Turles and so on. So 
Yeah, I'd be surprised if, if Liam, I'd say Liam and Brian Lohan are two guys now who, who might think that be no harm for us to have a really, really good league campaign and maybe win some silverware. Other counties think are a bit more, you know, reticent or a bit more, you know, laid back about the league. I'd be very surprised, for example, if, if Limerick win the league. I just think last year they needed to, just to kind of, but I think this year I'd say now, obviously, you know, John Kiley had four starters yesterday uh, on the championship team. I just, I think Limerick, you know, the league will serve its purpose for them, but I think it'll be about bigger challenges ahead. But I think for Liam and, and Brian, you know, I'd say that wouldn't mind getting to a league final or wouldn't mind getting a really good run in the league. I think it'd be important for them. I thought 11 points was a little bit harsh on Dublin, Shane. Um, I know, look, having said that, I think Tip looked like they were in great physical nick for this time of the year. All the good stuff that you would ordinarily associate with Tip Hurland, Supreme First Touch, excellent interplay, work rate was good, hooks and blocks plenty. Garrod O'Connor slicing over line balls like he's Joe Canning. Mm. I mean, I think there was... But having said that, I think Dublin actually played really well in... I think Dublin's issue, though, was they kind of played well in spells as opposed to stitching the sort of a consistency. And I think if they can move it on to that next level, like he's building effectively a new team. So I think both managers will have taken something, even though I did think 11 points probably a little harsh on Dublin. Yeah, maybe all over in the overall scheme. Yeah, yeah. I, I I do feel Tip were the better team. Ah, uh, they were better. You they know were. what I mean? Yeah, uh, yeah. There was some phases of play there. I suppose, even like Owen Connolly's sideline and, you know, the confidence he had in himself there to put it across and Jake got on the ball. And I just think, like, like I, I don't know, like, Tip, we, we never travelled well to Parnell, you know, we, even when things were going well, like, we got some fair trimmings up there. And even the last time we were up there, we got a trimming. Like, so that was a big thing, you know, for, 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 a, a, for, for the group as well, to go up there and just kind of put down a statement of intent to say that, you know, maybe previous Tip groups have come here haven't done well. You know, it's not going to be the same for us. I agree with what Barry said as well, because I think I think one B lads is is a much it's an easier for the top teams to get into the top three in one B than it is one A. Because if you look at one A, Rory, like let's be honest, everyone's going to target the Offaly game, right? And they're going to mm. see that as their guaranteed two pointer. But other than that, there's no other guaranteed uh in one A. Where's one B you have like right tip of bet Dublin? They will beat Antrim, they will beat Westmead. And that's just being honest, like so they yeah. will have six points. So they'll, you know, as Barry said. I think teams will look at, I think like, you know, Galway and Limerick will look at, right, if we can beat Dublin, we're going to beat Antrim, we're going to beat Westmead. They will like, and they'll say, if we beat Dublin, that's it. We're sorted like, you know what I mean? And they'll, I, I think they'll all have a game or two that they'll target to have maybe 11, 12 or 13 of their, who they're feeling are going to be their championship starters. They'll target a game or two in the league to see where, where we're at really. Probably will be toward, towards the latter end of the league. But to go back and tip in Dublin, it was a big win for them to go up there in Parnell, put down the marker, thought they played really well. I thought our half-back line was excellent. Absolutely, I thought, yeah. I thought yeah. our half-back line was probably our best line overall. Really, really solid. You know, guys coming in, I just think they were like physically as well, but they were able to move the ball around. They looked comfortable on the ball. I think I think Jake Morris has now stepped up. He, he, he was really good last year. He got nominated for an officer. You won't get nominated for an officer unless you're going well. And Jake, you know, and... I just feel like Shamey has gone now. Jason wasn't there on Saturday, and I think Jake. I think, I think he's, he likes he likes being the main guy now in the forward line. John McGrath's coming into real form. He was brilliant in the the Dylan Quirk match against Limerick. He played, albeit Limerick were very very, you know, they were maybe two or three of them will actually feature. But it was um, the the overall thing was for a great cause for the Dylan Quirk Foundation a couple of weeks ago in Turles. But John McGrath was excellent that day. He was. I thought he was good on Saturday. I thought Jake was very good. The lesser known players, lads, that I suppose maybe the greater, um, the the lesser hurling fan, they might know, they might know of Sean Ryan. Like Sean Ryan is, he's from Tipperary, just lives down the road from me here. Sean Ryan's been carrying a hurley around with him since he could walk. Like you know what I mean? He if he went to mass, he brought his hurley with him. But he, it's, he's getting the rewards. But now he has been outstanding for his club Tipperary at uh, in in senior club hurling here in Tip, and he is physically so strong. He's very good in the ball, and he's an excellent finisher. And I think this year could be his year. That himself, he'll decide. I want to be on this team now. I don't want to be a bit player anymore. He was he was on and off with the twenties. He was coming on. Now, I think what you seen the other day from him when he got his chance, he nailed it. Then Jake got the goal, put the game to bed. Andrew Orman from Templemore from the J.K. Brackens Club. He he's going to be a good talent as well. So those two guys are going to push on other lads, you know. And that's what you need, lads. But I I thought we were really good. I thought the Ronan at full back thing, right? 
I suppose we had Mikey Breen at full back last year. I think Mikey will play further out field. Why are they playing Ron in the full back? In my opinion, is Ron Maher is probably one of the best strikers of the ball in the game. And what he can do with full back is rather than having to go back and get it, if the lads won it and you can pop and you see Ron Maher there, but Ronan can absolutely, like, you know, Patrick Mahomes style quarterback, he can ping that space, he can beat a half back line, he can nail your centre forward if the six is set, sitting off you. And, you know, I think Ronan at full back will be very interesting as well. And um, so, look, all in all, it, it was a really, really good win. Could to talk about Dublin for a second, I just don't know, Rory, where, what they're going to do or how they're going to do it without Donald Burke. And that's, that's my opinion. I think it's been the way for the last few years. I know he's a bad hamstring injury that he didn't play with his club. Imagine what he could have done for an or Rory, like if they had him, you know, losing out Leinster final by a pint to, to the Lachlan's boys. But I, I just don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know wh- where's the best place to own O'Don- for, for Owen O'Donnell to slot into this team because he's a top-class defender. But do, do they feel that they need him in attack without Donald Burke? So, look, I think there's I think there's a lot of questions for well, I think I think on they don't, they don't, does Owen O'Donnell play full forward or centre forward? Certainly full forward for Whitehall Cullen Kills when he plays yeah. club hurling, doesn't That's he? That's what I mean. Like and without Donald Burke, but I suppose we all know him from an inter county standpoint as being maybe a, like a top class defender, top class full back. But I, I, I don't know. I, I I they are a new team. Like if I went down through the programme, you know, you'd know some of them from from the minors or their twenties, but like as you said, Mahal who is he's really trying to it is a rebuild. Even last year was the start of it. That has to it's continuing this year. And I think that was evident in, in Parnell on Saturday. Like. Mm. And I think it was talking to Rory was it and I again I, I think that and Shane won't appreciate this maybe in a way. I think that the tip are going to be I'm not say a dark horse, they're always got lots of hurdles and tip, obviously. But you know, I think last year's championship exit is is going to be long term uh you know, Liam Cahill will be using this and we wouldn't have to use it nearly as a stick to beat them with. And, you know, Tip were very impressive in last year's championship and then the whole thing kind of unexpectedly fell apart uh, on the last day and uh, just flat and maybe, you know, a young enough team maybe outside the likes of Noel and Bonner and so on and Ronan and, uh, you know, I thought, I just thought, I thought yesterday, I thought they were incredibly hungry. You know, obviously physically, physically they're in great shape yeah. but as all teams are, but I just thought that the level of hunger that they displayed in an opening round league game, you know, and I really think that, you know, they are going to be, and they get now the bear pit that's going to be Munster again is going to be obviously, you know, that does seem a bit almost lopsided in a way still, like, because you'd expect that Davey's going to get some kind, some kind of turn out of, out of Waterford this year because, you know, they've got great hurlers in Waterford still, like, and a lot of changeover in players, but I really think that, you know, I was putting on a bet on... You know, a league final, I think Clare and Tip would be two teams that would be very, very hungry to get. I mean, back down to Clare in a second, I thought Clare were very impressed yesterday. You know, no one's talking about Tony Kelly being missing, and yet they put up a very good score, and, you know, two quick goals that Cork got, and yet Clare came back, and, you know, I'd say disappointing, disappointing for, for Cork in a way that, you know, they would expect maybe that, was it a kind of your usual, typical Cork performance, there was some flashes of brilliance, and, but like, you know, the nitty gritty of the league game, it, it did seem that Clare really wanted it more. I took, I took the two hungriest teams the weekend, I thought were Clare and Tip. I really did. Yeah, let's move on to Cork and Clare. And actually, one point I think which is worth making before we move off Dublin Tip, Barry, as well, was um, Shane Hines, the referee. It was my first time seeing him in action. And yeah, he did an absolutely fabulous game. You no, no issues yeah. there. But he blew a good few throws. And you know, you mentioned our, we we might have been speaking about this off air. Mm. Uh, that might be an element. Is there a frustration or potentially a frustration for maybe supporters, players, management, even the referees themselves, where they feel like they're under pressure to blow off of these things early on, and then it just gets forgotten about when we come into championship. Yeah, yeah, and I like you know, it's a good few younger referees. John Keenan's gone, Pod Doyle's gone, Fergal has gone. So a good few younger lads with a chance maybe to establish themselves and. You know, they've probably been told in meetings like, you know, there is definitely, I, I look at this now with Conor Donovan and so on, but in terms, I do think there's a bit of a, a real issue with, with throw ball and hurling and it's literally just been released at this stage. There's no strike in the majority of cases. Um, so they are going to try and, I think, nail it down. And it, yeah, it will probably, again, the usual happens the league early on and then we suddenly, a bit like the football matches yesterday, lots of yellow cards given out and will be yellow cards when it comes to late April and May, we're not sure, but uh, like I, I do think early on they will try and 
you know, and managers even I'm sure are probably saying, look at lads, you know, try and be a little bit more obvious with the strike in a way. At the few games I noticed, there was a good few more passes off the hurley rather than yeah, yeah, a good few, and maybe that's a way of getting rounded, like in a way, you know. Um, but yeah, no, yeah, yeah, Shane's a good lad, nice lad from, from Galway, and uh, you know, we do need hurling referees to come through, like we do need them to. You know, there is a shortage there now with John and Pod gone retired this year, and you know, so we, we do need them. It's good to see uh, Thomas Lee and, and yeah, and obviously Shane Hine, the, those lads for, doing well and, and best luck to them. We do need a you know, looked apart, very fit looking lads, not kind any accidents with um, you know, up and down, up up the play like um obviously pass the fitness test. So uh best luck to them. Uh moving on to Cork Clare, Shane. I don't know if you got an opportunity to watch it because obviously you were in on duty in Nolan Park. I just think from I mean, I suppose in, in many ways it was a classic league game, but I thought the quality was maybe a little lower than I was expecting. There was a lot of misplaced balls. There was a lot of, you know, wayward shooting, poor shot selection at times from both teams now. Cork specifically, and I suppose the two goals Cork got in the first half kind of maybe gave the they scoreboard, were, were, yeah, yeah. gave them a, uh, kind of kept them in it. Like, player were pretty much dominant all over the field. I thought they were. I thought it was... They probably both played better against the wind, like that's um, right, that's right, yeah. You know, which is interesting, and I suppose that's just the the quality of players that are there now, like that. It's it is getting worked to a zone now rather than whereas before, maybe if you had the wind, maybe what mainly 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 the full back line were just going to launch it, like. But and I think Cork kind of actually went to that, like they went to kind of a hail mary route, Rory finishing up in the game because I thought they felt they had to get something out of it and they were forcing the thing. Whereas early on in the game, then they like because Clare were shutting them down, I suppose, around around uh, midfield, but they just there was no real direct ball going in. Like I'd say Patrick Horgan and I'd say like even uh Robbie when Robbie Flynn was in there or, or Shea Kicks when they were in there for a spell, and there was just like there was nothing coming in. Like it was there was a very frustrating element. Like I, I thought like one of the like one of the best players on the whole field for me, um, I thought Adam Hogan was outstanding, like. Just from watching it back now when I um last night, like like himself and Paul Flanagan, they really got to grips with that threat because first of all the ball was slow coming in, so like players could get back and cut off the space in front of them. But if there was a quicker ball going in, and when it did go in and it did go in quick, usually something came out of it. So I just thought like Cork were maybe overdoing it ar- around around midfield, around their half back line rather than getting it in. And then for a finish, there was just kind of panic stations. They were just lo- they were just launching it in and put. With no real intent of to hit space, just more so Rory to get it in around there. Like that's that's what I felt about him. I from a Clare point of view, I thought Clare were much the better team there yesterday. I, I from from it's hard when you're not there, Rory, I suppose, to get a feel like, but yeah. from watching it, I thought Clare were much the better team. I thought I thought like say Connor Cleary was very, very solid again. You know, I thought I think he's a top class. As I said, Adam Hogan was really good. Top Mark Rogers, as Barry said, you know. When you lose and you're missing your big players, the likes of Tony Kelly's or Shane O'Donnell's, they, they're even more missed. But when you put in a performance like they did yesterday and you see Mark Rogers stepping up with 11 points, I think he got. You know, like, I mean, the, the, that that sits well. That that pressure, that that it's sitting well with him. Young hurler of the year last year, it's he's stepping up now. He says, right, I'm, I am I can be the man here now. No more so than Jake Morrison tip. I, I'm okay with being the man. I'm fine with that. Give me that responsibility. David Fitzgerald, really good. Shane Meehan looked really excited when he came on. Robin Mounsey as well. So these guys now are putting pressure on the established guys you know, when they do come back. And that's only good for Clare. Because like Clare are probably the closest at the moment to, to, for challenging Limerick, physically and hurling-wise. And that would be my view on it from, from last year. Watching yeah, well, that's proven. It's a proven yeah. fact, really. So, I mean, they're, the only, uh, they're the only team to beat them in what? last two or three or four years yeah. you know? and they're, they're able to go toe to them they just seem to have this hoodoo about getting over, getting to the final in Crow Park at the moment they just can't get over like Kenny had been that stopping block the last couple of times but I thought I thought overall Clare were good well worth the, the victory goals came against run of play Cork now are going to be in a bit of bother because Kilkenny are coming to town next week you have a week off then with a lot of Fitzgibbon stuff going on and stuff and then you have Waterford coming to town on February the 25th so like I mean like that's why I think the one A side of it is way tougher than the one B side of it because as I said they'll target a lot of the other teams they'll, they'll look it off and say right we should win that game right and you know whether they do or not then you know but I think that Kilkenny Cork have to get something out of that next Saturday night Rory and 
just quickly on Clare then I think Clare are in a good place I think they score a lot Rory but I also think they concede a lot and I just went back over their Munster Championship games in the Munster Championship round robin last year they conceded an average of 28 points per game wow now it, it like they do score a lot but they do concede a lot so I think maybe that's something and that happened as well yesterday like Cork scored put two, two 19, 19. 219 on the board 219 is a lot in, a, in, a, in winter hurling in winter hurling right and I just think maybe if there's something that they need to look at you know they, they have a, a world of talent up there so what do they need to look at is it the ball that's coming in that they find it hard to defend or what do they need to look at at the other end of the field because if they're conceding 28 points per game you, you know more often than not it's not going to get you over the line and it's not going to get you and, and let's like clear I think clear need a cup this year I think they need a cup on the table to really justify what they've been doing for the last few years. like Yeah, I, I think Shane had a good point there in the sense that, you know, two of the best players they had yesterday were, as you mentioned, Adam Hogan and, and Paul Flanagan was also excellent. And, you know, when you've got two of the best defenders on the field and yet you're still conceding 25 scores or 25 points, you know, then, I'm not, I said two lads were super, uh, but then it asked a question about, you know, where are we conceding? Like, you know, it's the second Cork goal was brilliantly finished by by uh, was it Timmy O'Connell I think but but the yeah. but the the uh, it was far too easy into the middle and the one flick pass over the top and it suddenly was you know bearing down the keeper but uh, again Shane mentioned you know that clear team you know even under previous management the record in finals has been poor or has been you know not performing on the really big days uh, learning semi finals and so on uh, I would think that. You know, they would relish, I think, a good league campaign, get to a league final. You know, we all know what happened in the league final when they got to it back under Jerry years ago. And even though they lost that league final went on and kind of was the starting point of that Clare team in 95. So, uh, you know, again, I think Clare will really go all guns blazing now. I think a good start. And, uh, you know, for them to get to a league final, maybe without Tony, uh, uh, would be a huge boost as well. You know, I think they're a team to look out for in the league. As I said, Clare and Tip, the two teams, I think, um, unless Limerick are allowed to enter a second team in the championship, which based on yesterday might, might be the case. Player tip, uh, it'd be like the 90s all over again. Yeah. Uh, the, before we sign off, Shane, I do think there's one um, significant story. Obviously, St. Joseph's at Tulla uh, three years ago, Cashel CBS last year, and yeah. a, another amazing story in the Hearty Cup. And I know some people outside Munster get annoyed when we constantly talk about the hearty this and the hearty that, but it is such a special competition for, uh, for, for Munster hurling people generally, it's, it's an amazing competition. And for three different schools to all win a first title each, given how storied some of the other schools would be the likes of the man and Flannins. And, you know, you've got a, you know, a couple of big schools in Tipperary Arts called Reach and Limerick, you know, for three schools to win their very first title three years in a row, and then for Nina to do it in, in the way that they did yesterday with a last minute goal is incredible. It was, it really was. And I, I, the scenes that were down there, and the, you know, a lot of people saying they haven't seen Joy like it on a hurling field in a long time. And I suppose it's great for Tip, like, you know, I, I, I think Rory, like, the hearty, you know, and I know, like, say, lads from Leinster or Cadoc or, 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 or from Ulster, like, like the hearty just has this. We it's love mystique. it, like obviously. It's, it's a, it's a, like yeah. you don't like we don't really know the names of the cups as well as we know the Hearty Cup. Now yeah. I, I I'm here and, and like you know, you'd hear about people involved with, with minor teams. My own brother's involved with tip minors and, and and he was telling me, you know, they played to Kenny Minors and he said there was a group of them like a group of the Kieran's guys there, like, you know, and they're kind of not really the strongest players on the Kieran's team. So what I'm hearing is that Kieran's are going to be the team to beat again in the All Ireland colleges hurling, mm -hmm. which is you know par for the course every year. Yeah, but yeah. to go back to what the achievement of Nina is, right? Their first ever time winning it. Um like they're they're the Dean Ryan champions as well. So it's it's massive like and and like say Cash will win it last year, Tip Nina winning it this year. It's great for what is going on in the clubs, right? The structure in the clubs bringing these lads forward. Nina, for example, had 11 clubs from the North Tip area involved. And clubs like who are not renowned strongholds, like, you know, um, the likes of, like, say, the Money Galls, the Silver Mines, these kind of clubs where they mightn't really be known outside, but, like, they're producing these players and they're getting in, like, Darren McCarthy guys from Tommy Vara. Well, Tommy Vara are a stronghold. Like, everyone knows Tommy Vara. They, they've been such a successful team. But Darren McCarthy, like, he's involved with the seniors there now. He's been a real leader for them. 
And it's just, I think it's a credit to what they're doing in the school inside their Nina at the moment to be Dean Ryan and Hearty Champions the same year. Phenomenal, phenomenal achievement that we would only associate normally, as you said, Rory, with, with the real traditional schools. Mm -hmm. To have 10, 11 clubs involved, it's a credit to everything that's going on in their clubs, first of all, to get these guys up to that level. They can win and play and be effective in Hearty Cup competitions. Um, a credit to the schools as well. And look, it's only good for, for, for Hurling, for underage development in tip as well to see these guys, to see what they're doing. Lads who are maybe 13 or 14 now in first or second year, like, Jesus, if they did it, we can do it when it comes to our turn. Like, you know, because, like, it's the Tullas, the Cashels, the Ninas, they're, they're, they're not the real traditionals. But as I said, I think it's it's so clear and it's a credit to everybody involved with them at their clubs underage and with their schools, getting them in and just the belief that's there now. And it was a fantastic achievement at the weekend. The the uh the All Ireland Colleges will be will be a different story. I think our school will actually come back and they'll be they'll they'll have learned a lot and they'll be probably a stronger team in the All Ireland for it. But as I said, I believe Kieran's are going to be the team to beat again. But look at the moment, they need a CBS lads and everyone involved with them. Well done, brilliant, brilliant mm -hmm. achievement at the weekend. An absolutely brilliant way to sign off as well. A real positive story at this time of the year. And congratulations to everybody in Nina CBS. Thank you to Barry. Thank you to Shane. Thank you to Ryan earlier. Good weekend. We'll be back on Thursday for uh, previewing what should, it's a hurling only weekend next weekend and has the spicy fixture of Cork Kilkenny in Super Value Park Equive, which we must all get used to saying <laughs> now at this stage. We won't mention the war. But we will be back on Thursday with a preview round two of the Allianz Hurling League and looking forward to that. Just thanks everybody for listening and we'll chat again soon. Lead by a point. There's the whistle. It's over.